Hello, my friend. Do you know the good news of the orange coin? Today, I'm out in Louisiana with very famous YouTuber Andy from Your Friend Andy. I'm from the channel named Your Friend Andy. I'm your friend, Andy. We're out here to visit a remote hosting Bitcoin mining flare gas facility. That is so many words, Nicholas. Which is right behind me, right there. It's right there. Right Look now. at it. I've seen outtakes of the news, and this is like what it looks like. Uh -huh. That's amazing. This little structure behind me is actually an upstream data contraption. You may remember the video I made about the little S19J black box silencer thing. Not to be confused with the shush miner, which is also a black box. Upstream makes Bitcoin containers of many sizes. Just, you just When I see that it, big like... red generator, I start to snap <laughs> and I can't stop. Hey, I'm a man. Hey, listen. <laughs> Is this jazzercising? Yeah. You may wonder why this Bitcoin mining contraption looks like it's built onto a trailer. Well, let me familiarize you with the concept of the stranded well. The ground beneath us here is filled with a pocket of black gold. On top of that oil is a giant pressurized cap of stranded gas. It gets that name because it's pretty hard to transport and it's going to come out of the ground as a part of the process of retrieving that oil. But a well like this one is simply too remote to do anything with the gas. You can't get a pipeline to it. You can't truck it away. It's either too expensive or technically not feasible to build a pipeline to carry away the gas. So what the oil companies do instead is this. They just set it on fire and burn it off into the air. That is an enormous amount of potential energy just literally up in flames. So this is where the innovative Bitcoin miner is swooping in. Instead of just venting this gas off into the atmosphere like you're literally seeing it do now, it can be diverted into these fairly giant generators. This is well, this is medium it's, sketchy. Yeah. It's not super sketchy, but it's also up really high. And yes. I, I feel like it was homemade. Each one of these machines behind me can produce one megawatt of electricity. 1.1. 1.1. 1. <laughs> 1. Is your mic still on? Yeah. <laughs> Add on a Starlink internet connection and one megawatt of electricity is just about the amount of power you need to run a container full of Bitcoin miners. Not only does the generator burn the gas more completely and therefore more cleanly, but it gives that gas a valuable job to do on its way out. I want to tell you really quick about the Wavra. It's a rare but majestic beast that we found Wavra. in the wild. I've seen them in many, I've seen them in three different states. Yeah. Seems like they're like kind of one of a kind or very few of them, yet everywhere we go, they seem to be there. Yeah. The Wavra. catch is you kind of have to sneak up on them. Because if you do to not, sneak upon the Wavra. yes, they will strike. The dual Python ability of the Wavra will just whip out there. If you find yourself in the presence of a Wavra and you make eye contact, try to stay <laughs> very Stay completely still. still. If you have anything in your pocket, toss it to the side and make a noise. The Wavra might look away and you can just go. bolt. Just go for it. This large container powered by one of these giant generators, once it's filled with S19J Pros and at today's prices, will create about 3,200 US dollars worth of Bitcoin every day. Just as a thought experiment, if Bitcoin were to return to its all-time high prices, that's more like $10,000 a day that this thing is going to produce off of gas that was just otherwise going to be wasted and polluting the air to boot. But back to the trailer thing. This entire Bitcoin farm comprised of 90-something S19J Pro. We're talking something like nine and a half petahash. can be disconnected from this oil well and hooked up to the back of a pickup truck at the drop of a hat. Why does anyone do anything at the drop of a hat, I wonder? Hang on. How about that? In the 1800s, people would signify the beginning of a fight by dropping a hat. Well, I guess if you got in a fight with the landowner and then he dropped his hat, you can move that trailer. That's the point. Or probably more likely when the well stops producing oil for any number of reasons. Fun fact, even though the oil man can pull quite a lot of oil out of the ground at a given site, they will tend to stop the well from time to time for a lot of reasons. Most of those reasons are money, but in the case where your oil well runs dry, bippity boppity boo, off goes your Bitcoin mine to the next one. And there are no shortages of these flare sites in the American South. This particular site that we were visiting is said to have about three more good producing years left in it before they shut it off. Here's exactly how that works. Okay, if I understand it correctly, there is this little thing that they call a Christmas tree at the top of that stack of things. That's where the oil originates out of the ground. It's gonna come down through these pipes over here and it goes up to this pressurized, pressure changing pressure thing and that's gonna extract the water out of it, and it's also gonna do whatever it has to do with the pressure because apparently this is coming out of the ground at 650 pounds per square inch, is that what they said? That runs in into this flare gas, so in order to get oil out of the ground, it also comes up with a bunch of natural gas and other dirty gases that they don't wanna use. They just burn that off. Some places they just vent it off. It just goes into the air, it's the worst thing ever. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna divert all that gas through another pipe into these two gigantic generators. These gigantic generators are gonna power this upstream data box full of S19J pros. And ultimately the goal is to end up with these things over here, <laughs> completely full of oil, and these things over here, completely full of Bitcoins, and everybody wins. 
<laughs> you normally think of oil rigs as having these big pumps, these oil derricks. That's not how this one works. The cavity under this plot is super pressurized for reasons I don't understand because I didn't go to school for that kind of thing. But as long as you dig deep enough, which in this case is more than a mile down, all you have to do is control the oil as it comes back up. Really, I just wanted to shoot a little something in here because I saw Andy come in here and shoot a little something. I don't have anything prepared to say, but look at all these S19J Pros racked up on this upstream data container. So what's the takeaway? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Well, I think this is pretty clearly a good thing. This is a net positive. This is taking something that was wasted and grosser and making it cleaner and not wasted. And even if you think that Bitcoin is just stupid and pointless and a scam, this is at least a net zero. It's yeah. not adding or taking away anything. No this one... gas was gonna, this was gonna happen. That flame was just gonna blow away. But instead, you're just gonna run it through a generator. And There's flames like this all over the country and you can't stop it. It's gonna happen. All this to say, no, not all this to say. Some of this to say. Some of this to say. A what few I of these say, things to say. One of the things I wanna say is that Musk Miners, my channel sponsor, Musk Miners is gonna have space available at this site to remote host S19s. So if you're looking to get into the Bitcoin game, it does seem like it's a bad time because the market's really low, but that also means that the Bitcoin machines are really cheap. But I submit it's the best time to do it. <laughs> it may be the best time to do it because when the market does return. Which it will. When the next bull run comes. Which will happen. The Bitcoin mining machines you buy now at whatever they are, $4,500, will go up to like $10,000 like they were a few months ago. And so you could be mining the Bitcoin that you mine for the next six months while you wait for the bull run to come. And then you could sell those machines at a win and it's almost like someone just let you use them for free and then paid you and then you got a bunch of Bitcoins. Which if you've drunk deeply of the orange Kool-Aid like we have, and you believe that there is a future for Bitcoin, that Bitcoin will go to its previous all-time highs and probably, hopefully, definitely, I think so, new all-time highs. Well, in that case, it's like a non-risk, like almost risk-free investment, at it's, least from my perspective. It seems like there's no risk in mining Bitcoin. <laughs> A Bitcoin 100,000 20, by 2021. By December 2021, Bitcoin $100,000. Everybody knows it. Uh -huh. If you're interested in buying Bitcoin mining hardware, whether you want to host it at this very site or just to run them at home, Musk Miners can set you up actually very quickly. This chart you're seeing right now on the screen, which will most likely be outdated in just a few days because the price of miners is closely linked to the price of Bitcoin and Bitcoin just doesn't like to stay still very long. But as you can see here, you can have an S19J Pro in your hands in as little as three days. The fall season is descending upon us, despite how sweaty I look in most of this footage from Louisiana. Replacing your home furnace with a new electric furnace that generates money when it runs is gonna be one of my new angles as it starts getting colder. Isn't that interesting? Get paid to heat your house. We're only about a couple of weeks away from the inaugural episode of the Space Warehouse Games, which I'm clearly pretty excited about. Ooh, Wobber's going into a puddle. Oh <laughs> is this okay. good for you, YouTube? Do you like what we're doing? Would you like and subscribe to this video on whoever's channel you're currently how watching it on? How far off topic can we go for how long before you start to click away? If we you're see watching that in the analytics. If you're watching this oh. on my channel, do not subscribe. Yeah. If you're watching this on Nicholas's channel, definitely subscribe. <laughs> YouTube. Thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun out in Louisiana with Andy and the Wavra and other Chris who can cook a real good steak filet.